Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm the Reverend Jason Radmaker, pastor of Asbury Crestwood United Methodist Church in Tuckahoe, New York. And on behalf of our entire congregation, welcome to the service of worship together, even when we are apart. I'm not filming from our sanctuary in Tuckahoe this morning. Obviously, I'm on the road. Uh, actually, today I'm uh, filming on the back porch of my in-laws house in Henry County, Kentucky. Uh, my family's on a road trip that's taken us to my hometown of Cordon, Indiana. You're going to hear uh, more uh, a story about Cordon in, in the sermon later in the service today. But uh, we're uh, on the road introducing uh, the uh, our baby to her grandparents and uh, wanted to take advantage of this opportunity as well uh, to do something a little different for our Sunday service to be able to share with you uh, even from this distance uh, today. So uh, it's good to be with you uh, in, this, uh, in this new way this morning. Uh, before we begin our uh, time in worship today, again, we want to extend to you an invitation to connect in a deeper way with our congregation during this season of social distancing. If you'd go to asburycrestwood.net, our church's website, you'll find information there, uh, ways in which you can be in touch with us, uh, send in an email. We'd love to know who you are and where you are, uh, where you're watching our services. Uh, also, you'll find information there for our, our, our online giving platform a simple click from our website would take you uh, to the website that will en enable you uh, to make a, uh, a donation to make your offering uh, for uh, what God is doing uh, through and with the people of Asbury Church we welcome that today now let's begin the Lord be with you let us pray Lord open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Let's continue now with our opening hymn.
Good morning, my name is Nathan Yardy, and today I will be reading Luke 4, 14 through 19. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. My shepherd will supply my need. Jehovah is his name. As we come now to a time of prayer, we want to be faithful to lift up the joys and the concerns that we carry with us to worship this day and carry with us into this new week as well. I'm aware of several uh, prayer requests that have made their way to me. And uh, before I share those, though, I want to invite you and remind you that uh, that is certainly a part of our worship that uh, we, uh, uh, a way in which we invite you to participate. If you uh, are, have a prayer request and would like to send that to asburyumc167 uh, at gmail.com, uh, I would be happy to include those prayers in our services. Or if you'd include a note, uh, just pray for me, but I, I don't want to share this uh, publicly. Certainly, I invite you to do that as well. But this is an important way for us to to uh, continue to be God's people together, praying for one another during this season. Uh, requests that I'm aware of today that uh, uh, have been asked to be shared with you. Uh, Mary Toms has asked us to pray for her cousin Heather. Uh, we pray for Tracy Moser today. We pray for Erica Yardy's grandmother Eunice. And we pray for uh, Ruth Mackey. Ruth's having uh, surgery this week. Uh, so we want to pray for her, the doctors who care for, care for her. Pray for Jerry uh, as well. Certainly, we uh, lift up in prayer uh, the concerns that, uh, we, um, that are common for so many during this season. Uh, prayers for our nation, for our communities, prayers for people everywhere, communities everywhere uh, impacted by the coronavirus. And certainly, uh, we, uh, we know of hot spots around the country, but we know uh, that we must continue to be diligent uh, in New York as well, especially as we start to turn our attention toward opening our schools uh, or what it might look like, what school might look like in the fall. Uh, we pray for our kids, we pray for teachers, we pray for administrators, we pray for a spirit of a common good, uh, we pray for uh, a spirit of love uh, and, uh, and wisdom uh, for, uh, for everyone placed in a position to make decisions that affect others. Let's take these now uh, and those that we hold in our hearts to God in prayer. Let's pray together. O wisdom on high, by you the meek are guided in judgment, and light rises up in darkness for the godly. Grant us in all doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us do, that we may be saved from all false choices, and that in your light we may see light and in your straight path may not stumble. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now let's continue to pray with the confidence of God's children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, 
Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, bless this moment of preaching now, that as your spirit moves among us and within us, good news might be proclaimed and received in the hearts of your people, and that it might blossom there into actions, actions that bear witness to the truth and the love that we have experienced in Jesus Christ, the one in whose name we pray. Amen. I wanted to share with you uh, today uh, a story from uh, the history of my hometown of Cordon, Indiana. Cordon's a very historic place and I grew up uh, surrounded by uh, the stories and the monuments of that history. Cordon was the first state capital of Indiana. Indiana became a state in 1816 and for the first few years before the capital moved to Indianapolis where it's been ever since, Cordon was, um, was the seat of government for that new state. Uh, the original state capitol building still stands in my, uh, on the town square in Corridon, one of the uh, earlier, earliest uh, governor, governor's mansions, uh, or house really, not really a mansion, uh, it stands in town as well. And from, uh, from that, those beginnings uh, in state history on through the Civil War, on through just the, uh, the, the uh, history of industry and commerce and people in that town, I grew up uh, surrounded, uh, saturated in, uh, in history, in the history of that place. Uh, my first job, my first volunteer job really, uh, I think when I was 12 years old, I worked as a tour guide in, uh, in the first state capitol building and in the uh, governor's house as well, telling people uh, about the history uh, of Corridon. The story I wanted to share with you today though wasn't uh, on the tours that I, wasn't included in the tours that I gave uh, back when I was uh, a kid. Uh, in fact, it was a story that I wasn't even aware of until just a few years ago. And that probably says something about uh, who, uh, who got to write down the history of, uh, of that town, who gets to tell history, uh, any community's history. Because it's the story of a woman who was enslaved. Uh, this is the story of Polly Strong and the actions that she took uh, to not only become free, but to uh, set in place uh, a, a mechanism, a legal mechanism, an illegal argument that would allow others to become free as well. Polly Strong was born in 1796. Uh, the limited biographical information that is available about her indicates that she was uh, most probably the, the child of a uh, European mother and a Native American father. From the moment of her birth, however, she was considered property and she was enslaved. Uh, as she grew up, uh, she uh, uh, was, was bought and sold uh, a few times uh, and um, and as she uh, grew, uh, she became a more valuable uh, piece of property uh, to those who regarded her as such. But as I mentioned, in uh, 1816, Indiana became a state. And the state constitution, which was also written in my hometown, um, said that slavery would have no place in, uh, in this new state. And when uh, word of that constitution made it to Polly Strong, um, she became the centerpiece uh, of uh, a legal case that, as I said, would uh, set precedent in Indiana and uh, allow others uh, to follow in her steps to freedom. She made the argument that the uh, rules, the laws that established her as property were now defunct, that these were laws set up uh, before Indiana had become a state, and that now uh, that statehood had come, that the laws of the constitution of that state uh, were uh, those that would be um, the held sway in the land. She made that argument in her uh, local court uh, first and, uh, and lost. Uh, lost her case. Uh, the uh, uh, judge in, uh, in those proceedings ruled that no, uh, her argument uh, was, was uh, incorrect and that she would remain enslaved. But she wasn't satisfied with that, so she appealed her case, uh, appealed her case on up to uh, the Indiana Supreme Court. Uh, 
um, where uh, she uh, again made the argument that uh, the new constitution uh, had become the law of the land and because of what that uh, constitution said about slavery in Indiana and the uh, abolition of slavery in Indiana that um, that she was free and that she should be uh, she should be free and um, the Supreme Court uh, of the state on uh, July 22nd, uh, 1820, 200 years ago this week, uh, ruled in her favor and she became free. And that uh, precedent set by Polly Strong's case uh, became the standard to which uh, many others would appeal, saying that, uh, again, a new rule, a new law, a new story uh, held sway in the land and others would uh, enter into the court, make that argument, and others uh, found their way to freedom as well. I love that story. I love uh, the, the theme that it bears witness to of a new story, of a new truth, uh, and its impact on someone's life. The, um, um, and there's something powerful in that and some, something deeply, uh, that resonates deeply with our faith. Today we've heard a lesson of scripture that attests to this truth as well. It's from the fourth chapter of Luke, uh, one of the most famous moments in Jesus's ministry. It's at the beginning of his ministry as you're following uh, Luke's timeline, Matthew as well. Uh, this is uh, really the beginning of Jesus's public ministry. He's been baptized, he's gone out into the wilderness for 40 days, and he's come back to his hometown where he takes the, uh, he takes the scripture, takes the scroll of the scripture Isaiah in his local synagogue, and he reads this powerful passage about good news coming to the people, good news for the poor and recovery of sight to the blind, uh, liberty for those who are oppressed, freedom for the captives, the year of God's favor has come to the people. Uh, and as Jesus reads these familiar words, he says to all who have gathered there today in your hearing, as you have heard me read these words, Jesus says, the scripture has been fulfilled. In Jesus, a new story, a new truth, a new law, if you will, has become, has been made known to us and to all. That truth, that person of Jesus centers us as a community of faith today. It reminds us that the stories told about us and the stories that we tell that would diminish others, that would regard others as less than us, that would regard ourselves as better than others, the stories that would uh, see others not as unique and blessed children of God, but as pawns in our story and machinations, as uh, as, as steps, uh, as barriers over which we must step to get what we want. Everything that diminishes uh, our humanity and the humanity of others, Jesus uh, smashes those falsehoods and smashes those lies. Uh, Jesus exposes those old stories as false and says, no, 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 no. When the Spirit of God is present, a truth, a light shines that the darkness cannot overcome. And that truth, that light is one of freedom, is one of grace, is one of dignity, is one of concern for all, is one in which there is enough for everyone, enough of all good things for everyone. This is the kingdom of God that Jesus comes to bear witness to and invites us to share and share with others as well. You know, that Polly Strong story, um, I, I, it, it, I wish, I wish there could have been more of her, uh, 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 of her own words recorded in it. I, I wish uh, we could have known uh, what light uh, went off in her heart and in her head 
when she heard the news that there was a new law in the land, a law that said she was free. I wonder what that feeling was like, what that experience was like. But as much as we might like to know that historic example, that story and that experience is still available to you and to me and to others that we encounter. Because all too many of us, all too many in our communities are living under the power of lies. Lies that tell them they're not worth much. Lies that tell them they're, they're, they're not to be included. Lies that tell them God couldn't possibly love them. Lies that tell them they're, um, they're, they're expendable, that they're no good, they're of no value to anyone. We have good news in Jesus Christ for these and for all the good news of the love that will not let us go, the good news that says each and every person is created in the image of God and blessed by God, equipped by God to do something good, to do something beautiful, to share God's good gifts, the gifts that they've been given with others, to bless others. Each and every person can become part of the story of freedom and justice and love that Jesus invites us to tell and share. That's the story of good news. It's always been the story of good news. And whenever that story is told, lives change. I invite you then to receive that story today as good news in your heart. And I invite you as well to share that good news, to share that story with words or with deeds in the week ahead. Let's make a difference in someone's life because of the difference Jesus has made in ours. That's not only good news for which we give thanks, that's good news in which we participate. Thanks be to God for it. Amen and amen. As this service comes to a close, um, I want to thank you for joining me on the Burkhart's back porch today. Uh, it's uh, it's been uh, it's been a fun experience uh, filming here, and I I, I hope uh, I hope you uh, have been able to to pay some attention to uh, the words that I've spoken. I know the view behind me is absolutely stunning, uh, and I hope that's been a blessing to you as well. The rolling hills of Kentucky are, are one of uh, one of God's gifts that give me great pleasure. So uh, I wanted to share them with you today. Um, before we go as well, again, I remind you uh, of ways that you can stay in touch. Uh, send your prayer request, asburyumc167 at gmail.com. If you're watching on Facebook, we invite you to share the view from your digital pew. Snap a picture of, uh, of yourself uh, watching this service, however you uh, experience it, and post that on uh, the Facebook page, uh, the church's Facebook page as well. Or go to asburycrestwood.net, the church's website. Uh, and again, uh, there's lots of ways you can be in touch there. You can participate in online giving. You can find more information about uh, being in touch with the church there as well. But now as you go into this new week, go as a blessed people. 
go as a people who walk in the light of God's love and grace. Go as a people blessed by good news and empowered to share God's good news in all that you say, in all that you do. Make an effort to bless someone else because you know that Jesus has blessed you. Go then from this place into this new week in the name of the one who makes all this possible, the one revealed as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia.